so much going on, so much that's happened in Karnataka. Where do we begin? Well, let's start with the BJP. Let's talk about the Bharatiya Janata Party and their achievements. Don't know. Hold up. Let's focus on the numbers first because that's what an election is all about, right? Let's start with that. Yeah, and not just numbers. It's also got a lot of history behind it if you look at what's happened in Karnataka politically. And that sets up the significance of this election. Okay, let's start with the numbers then. There are 224 seats up for grabs in the state of Karnataka. I'm breaking it down. How does it stand currently? Well, it's the BJP that's in power with the maximum number of seats. The BJP has 104 seats. What about the Congress? The Congress is second with 78 seats. And then you have the JDS with 37 seats. We, we know all of that. We know how you got back to power. But let's leave that aside for a moment. Let's talk about the results before that in 2013. When the Congress had the very clear mandate, the Congress with a sweeping majority won 122 seats. And before that, before 2013, I'm talking about the election in 2008, then it was the BJP that had in fact won the people's mandate with 110 seats. And I'm sure everyone's wondering why I made that comment earlier about the JDS being kingmaker. Look at what happened in 2004. But like so often we've seen in Indian politics, unholy alliances often tend to break apart and it's happened repeatedly with the JDS. And that brings us to the rather surprising trend in Karnataka politics. No government has ever managed to repeat itself. I'm talking about this trend being the case since the Indira Congress times in Karnataka. One of the challenges Karnataka has faced that in 40 years, in only 10 years have you had two chief ministers who completed their full five-year term. So I think that's one of the internal dynamics of uh, political parties and has worked to their disadvantage. And this time also if you see, no political party, by no I mean at least the Congress and the BJP, have not declared their chief ministerial candidate. And which is a reflection of the fact that uh, you are going into an election as a party and not as a leader. And that's why the BJP has its task cut out right now. They have to ensure that they buck that trend, that they can actually come back to power in Karnataka. Since we're talking about history, it's important to also know about how Karnataka has been playing such an important and a vital role in shaping national politics as well. Jay Prakash Narayan's massive JP movement was a landmark one against Indira Gandhi's Congress. And Karnataka actually led the way for that with the Janata Party's win in 1985. And let's talk about that because one of the biggest stalwarts, you're talking about Karnataka politics, you can't not talk about the political legends. And one of the biggest stalwarts is H.D. Devagowda, who led the Janata Dal to a massive election victory in 1994 and thereby turned over Karnataka politics on its head. And uh, how many of these MLAs, I'm not asking you the number, how many of these MLAs have suggested to you that one of the solutions to the problem is change of leadership? <laughs> I know you are very clever. <laughs> Remember that Devagowda also became the Prime Minister in 1996. But, you know, I want to rewind a little more on that. Let's talk about what happened in Karnataka since the country's independence. Back then, in the 1950s and 1960s, Karnataka was referred to as the Mysore state. And at that time, it was a bastion of the Indian National Congress. So the Congress, the Grand Old Party, never really had to work hard earlier to ensure that they'd regain power in Karnataka. It was this stronghold. Since the state's reorganization in 1956, the Congress was largely in power for a major chunk of the time. Okay, let me take it forward from here. You may have had Mysore state officially becoming Karnataka in 1972, but that didn't really change politics in any way in the state. The Indian National Congress continued to enjoy power, continued to enjoy being in the throne in Karnataka. Devaraj Aras and Gundur Rao had their terms until the juggernaut was halted by the JP movement. Let me step in there. The Congress muscled their way back in the state. But perhaps the turning point in Karnataka came in the year 1994. Why do I say that? Well, the Janata Dal, inspired by H.D. Devagowda, came to power, stormed into power rather, in Karnataka. There were two key takeaways from that election. One, 
the Congress, which was the might force, was reduced to just 34 seats. And the bigger impact was that the Lotus, the BJP, had finally bloomed in Karnataka with B.S. Yadurappa spearheading the BJP to become the second largest party. So the Congress from number one came to number three. Because, you know, people are fed up with this Congress because that Sonia Gandhi cheated that uh, uh, voters. Um, that's why people are ready to support Bharat Jinta Party.